Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. I was hoping this video was going to be more better, but instead, it's kind of sad. This is part of the electric brake booster system from a, I don't know, 2018 up to 2000, I don't know, it goes back as far as even 2015, but this is part of the brake system, and... I'm not exactly sure what this is. It has a some sort of a control unit on it with really big you know high amperage cables like five of them and then a whole bunch of little bitty wires. Now the whole idea here is to come up with another solution for overcoming my lack of space for having power brakes and when I ordered this from a local salvage yard and it showed up I was really excited that this is going to be the thing and if you look at it this is definitely where uh, the, the um, brake pedal connects so this is some sort of a master cylinder there's a bleeder valve here and there's brake fluid or uh, you know, brake lines coming out. There's two small ones and then these big ones. And then this was this would go to some sort of a little reservoir. But I don't know what this does because there's no like the, If you see an actual brake booster, there's a big there's a big electric motor on it and a gearbox. Uh, and the way that it works, you can look online how it works. But whenever you push the pedal, the push rod goes in. And it's got like a little gear that goes up to a motor with a gearbox and stuff. But when you push in, uh, and let's say the car was off, you push in, it would just apply the brakes into the master cylinder like normal. But when the car is on and it's giving you boost, there is a some sort of a travel sensor, and it will sense that you push the brakes a little bit, and it will tell that electric motor to spin through the gearbox, and then it's got a gear, kind of like a rack, rack and pinion on the... Um, on the push rod and that motor will spin and it'll turn that push rod and it'll assist you to braking so it's a big motor like like pretty big and then the gearbox is pretty big too because there's got to be a bunch of gear reduction in there anyway none of that stuff's in here so my guess is what this is this is this is the actual trans um what i just said the word i just said the word this is the actual sensor that uh detects the travel uh, probably this here and why there would be such big cables going into this thing I don't know but I suspect what happens is this is like an initial brake um, pressure and then this goes down into an actual brake booster that's got the master cylinder and the little le the fluid levels that you would top up I don't know I really don't understand how this works I've never seen an Accord um, brake system flow chart I guess hydraulic flow chart or anything but it's not going to work for me because this isn't any good at all. And so I'm going to take this back. Fortunately, my little salvage yard gives up to six months to return stuff. So that's cool. So I'm going to take this back. And, man, in the meantime, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Yeah, I am. I know what I'm going to have to do. Because I did actually find some pictures online of what a real brake booster looks like, an electric brake booster. And it's big. It's really big. Uh, I mean, probably nearly the same size as the standard vacuum booster with master cylinder uh maybe not quite i don't know it's big they are they are large so even if i had one of those it wouldn't fit in here so what i'm going to end up doing i'm going to measure between this tube and then well i'm going to i'm just going to cut that back row of, of batteries off and put them somewhere else i don't know where yet I could, I could potentially make, break it up into two boxes, put one box right there and one box right there. And that would kind of flank what I want to be my front trunk. And uh, I'm just talking out loud now. I don't even know if that'll work. Uh, no, that won't work because those batteries are too tall. And I've, I'm under the impression that if you lay batteries down, that's not good for them. Because I could lay down a few of them and come up this way. But I've been told that that's not uh, the best thing to do. And I've been told that by someone who's 
going to college, engineering college or whatever, and he is specifically studying with the iron phosphate prismatic cells. That's the impression that he gave me. He's a little nice little kid that works up at EVTV in Cape Girardeau. But um, so I'm gonna have to find a place to put the rest of those cells, and that's how it is. Uh, that is all for now then, I guess. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.